A new book is highlighting the potentially harmful link between chemicals and everyday products and our health. Evidence detailed in Dr. Leonardo Trisande's new book, Sicker, Fat, or Poorer, suggests that chemicals like pesticides and phthalates may be linked to serious diseases like obesity, diabetes, brain disorders, and fertility problems. In a statement to CBS News, the American Chemistry Council said, quote, to stay below ranges of exposure determined to be safe, consumers should read product labels closely and follow directions carefully. And the trade group for personal care products disputes the evidence, saying because phthalates are widely used in many consumer products, not just cosmetics and personal care products, their safety has been extensively researched and reviewed. We did not hear back from the FDA because of the partial government shutdown. So Dr. Leonardo uh, Trasande is here. He's an associate professor of pediatrics and environmental medicine and population health for NYU Langone Health. Joining us now. Thank you so much. You it's got a, a big, long title. Um, I thought this was an incredibly fascinating story. And you really focus on chemicals that you say are disrupting our horm hormones and the fallout from that. Tell me about these chemicals. Hormones are molecules that our body uses to signal and communicate. And hormone disruptors are chemicals that scramble those signals and contribute to disease. Uh, the chemicals that we know about so far number in the thousand range, but the evidence is particularly strong for four categories of chemicals. Pesticides, which are used in agriculture, phthalates, which are used in personal care products and food packaging, bisphenols, which are used in aluminum can linings, and flame retardant chemicals, which are used in electronics, uh, furniture, and mattresses. All right, so that is a wide range of products and foods. Um, how can we limit our exposure to them? Aluminum cans, I mean, that's a lot of stuff. The great news here is there are a lot of safe and simple steps we can take as individuals to limit our exposure. Simply turning over the plastic water bottle and checking the number is a great piece of information to keep in mind. The numbers three, six, and seven are not safe for use across the board. Three are for phthalates, uh, which are it disrupt male sex hormone in particular and also disrupt metabolism. Six is styrene, a known carcinogen, and seven are bisphenols, which are synthetic estrogens and are also known as obesogens, chemicals that may be influencing our, our obesity in the United States. And doctor, people are gonna hear this and go, yeah, we know there's an obesity problem and we've been told over and over again it has to do with the quality of food that we're eating and the fact that we're not exercising. Um, there are government watchdog groups that make sure that we're not exposed to harmful right. chemicals. So where does this come from? Is this based on science? Nothing in this book takes away from the message that diet and physical inactivity are the leading drivers of the obesity epidemic. But the evidence is mounting day after day suggesting that chemicals are an important third factor, fundamentally changing how our body manages calories and shifting them to fat as opposed to protein and carbohydrates. So the FDA banned the BPA in baby, in baby bottles and sippy cups back in 2012. Last year, the FDA said that BPA is, quote, safe for consumers. How definitive is the link between BPA and other chemicals to obesity and heart disease? There are always going to be shades of gray, but even the FDA's own science suggests low level effects in the range that we see in Americans today. We're in a situation similar to what we were at with lead and tobacco maybe 20 or 30 years ago, where the evidence was playing catch up and look at where we are now realizing that those were problems. That's a similar situation to where we are today with endocrine disrupting chemicals. You know, Vlad read that statement from the American Chemistry Council, I think, and it basically said, hey, why don't you as consumers, you should read the labels and sort of uh, limit exposure for yourself. What do you make of that? At some level, we have to ask ourselves, do we want to gamble with our health? And with these safe and simple steps, that takes us one step forward. But the reality is these are exposures not just in our homes, they're in our workplaces, in our schools, in our buses, our subways. And if we all rise up and even just mention the issues in the first place, and then our employers, our schools step up and, and say to manufacturers, no, we don't want these chemicals in the products that our employees, our, our students work with. 
then that has a domino effect because those are big purchasers. And really the issue here is about changing the market share towards healthier products. I'm not saying that there isn't great consumer power in the pocketbook or wallet, but there is this broader message that we need to carry forward. I want to just briefly, we got about a minute to talk about foods. I mean, yes. one of the things that, you know, Emory and I have always discussed this, we've always been intrigued by this, how the United States is getting fatter, as the title of your book says, yeah. and the rest of the world is not. Some countries are. Some countries are experiencing it. When they're eating our food. When, when they're eating our food. What is it about the food that is produced here in the United States, whether it's uh, meat, fish, fowl, um, grains, that makes us sicker and fatter than other countries? So you might think that the Environmental Protection Agency is the end all and be all when it comes to chemical safety, but it's actually more of a Swiss cheese kind of framework. And when it comes to food, the US Food and Drug Administration has a huge amount of oversight over the chemicals that get into our diet each day. And the reality is here that the science that they use to judge chemicals for their safety is quite outdated. And in some cases, they actually allow the chemical industry or the manufacturer to vouch for the safety with without any proof of safety in the first place. Wow. Great, okay. Um, all right, the book is called Sick or Fat or Poor, The Urgent Threat of Hormone Disrupting Chemicals to Our Health and Future and What We Can Do About It. Dr. Leonardo Trasande, thank you so much for being with us. It was an honor to be here, thank, thank you. you.